Hey, hey, it's Tamara here. Welcome to the third episode of my tutorial series about making a farm simulator in Unity. This series is also known as Making Heyday. In this episode you will see how to make one of the most important features in the game, a building system. It will cooperate perfectly with our Heyday style shop system with drag and drop. Interested? Continue watching. So, first thing first, let's look at how the system works in the original game. We have the shop from which we can drag an object onto the map. You can see that after you exceed a certain point, the shop closes and we get an object instantiated. Then we can drag it around and if we're happy with the place it is on, we can release the touch and the building will get placed. But this is only if the place is available, of course. After the placement is done, you can still edit your map. For this, you just need to hold your finger for a few seconds on the object you're trying to move. Then, you enter a building mode and you can move the object around. Also, you can notice that we have grid snapping, which we will implement too. Now, let's talk about my version of this system. It is not identical to the one in the game and the implementation is probably not the same, since most of the machines in the original game are 3D models. I mentioned it in the previous episode. If you'd like to watch all the available episodes, you can find them in this playlist. And if you'd like to get new episodes of this series, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and most importantly, turn on the notifications. This way you'll get notified when a new episode comes out. How does this system work? We have a grid and one tile map, which we'll use to keep track of the available area. If a tile is painted, it is taken. If a tile is empty, it means that it is available to place on. In addition to that, we have a prefab of a building. It has a defined size measured in tiles like 2 to 3 or 4 to 6, etc. When you want to place an object onto the map, the system checks if the area under it is clear and if that's true, we can place it. After the placement, the system will paint our tile map with tiles to indicate that the area is now taken by the house. It should be noted that this system will not have a visible indication for the player that an area is available or not, just like you see in Heyday. If you want a grid building system that immediately indicates which spots are available, you can follow one of my other tutorials. The system from this episode is based on it. By the way, files to this and other tutorials are available on my Patreon page if you'd like to skip rewriting code. Let's get to the tutorial itself. Start with preparing the scene for our system. Create a new isometric tile map. Set its size to be small if you want precise snapping, something like 0.5 on the x-axis and 0.25 on the y-axis. For this tile map you have to create a tile. The only difference is that you have to set the tile's opacity approximately to half. Now you can grab this tile and paint our tile map. I also renamed the background tile map so there is no confusion with the placement tile map. We paint it in places where the placement is not possible, like the road. Next, we have to create a prefab of an object. Drag an isometric sprite into the hierarchy. Resize it by setting the pixel ratio of the sprite higher. This is the right way to resize 2D images in Unity. I know that in my case it should be 600, but you do it to your liking. Then add a polygon collider to this object. And now it is time to create the scripts. We need three of them. Building system which will handle managing the tile map, placeable object which is responsible for placement management and object drag which is just for handling the dragging. Before we go to the coding, I want to make a point that we're making a mobile game which requires working with touch input, but in the scripts you will see that I'm using mouse input. This is due to the fact that it works fine on mobile too. I tested it myself. Open the first script, building system. Create a region for tile map management. First method is get tiles block. It is static and returns an array of tile bases. It accepts a bounds in area and a tile map. This method is supposedly available in tile map class, but unfortunately it doesn't work and causes the editor to shut down. So I wrote it as a helper method. First we create an array of tile bases. Set a counter to zero. 
In a for each loop, go through each position in the area. Get the position and store it in a vector 3. Initialize an array element with a tile which you get from the tile map on that particular position. Increase the counter. After the loop, return the array. Our next method is setTilesBlock. This is just another helper method. It accepts an area, a tile base to set, and a tile map on which to set. First, we create an array of tiles. Then we need to use another helper method to fill this array with tiles. After this, call setTilesBlock on the tile map you passed as a parameter. Pass our area and the array. After the declaration of this method, create another called fillTiles. It accepts a tile array and a tile base. Go through each tile in the array and initialize it with tile base. Call this method in setTilesBlock. And our final method is clearArea, which accepts a bounceInt area parameter and a tile map to clear. It will just call setTilesBlock method in it. Pass the area null as a parameter of tile base and the tile map. Before we move on, create a few fields for the system. First one is field current, which will implement a single tone pattern. Don't forget to initialize it in the wake method. I did it later when I was trying to fix the issues. Then create a few fields for system management. Grid layout, tile map and a tile base for a taken tile. Moving on to the next region. Building placement. Create the most important method. Initialize with object. It will accept a game object we're building and a position. First, we have to modify the position that we received, since it was only converted from screen to world coordinates. Set the Z position to 0. Then, subtract from Y position an offset, which is the half of the bound size of the sprite render. In other words, it's just half of your sprite's height. The vector is ready and we can convert it to a cell position and then back to local position interpolated. This will ensure grid snapping. After this, instantiate an object at the position we calculated. Add an object drag to the building game object. Also, I wrote an extra line of code here which is not necessary so you can get rid of it and just directly add the component to the object. We don't need to save a placeable object. Now, let's create a method which will tell us if an area is available to place. It returns a bool and takes a bounce-in area. We get an array of tiles on that area from our tile map. Then, we check each tile if it is equal to the taken tile. If yes, we immediately return false since the area is not available. Otherwise, after the loop we return true. Another method we will create is take area. It accepts an area and calls a setTilesBlock method with that area, taking tile and our tile map. Now you can go to the editor and add building system script to the grid object. Fill in the fields. Next up is our placeable object. Create necessary fields, bool placed and vector3 to save the position. And also a bounce int area. First, create a method can be placed which returns a bool. First, we need to save the position of this object on the grid. For this, call method local to cell on grid layout. Create a temporary area and initialize it with the existing object area. Now, assign the position you saved to this temporary area. Call building system to check the temporary area for availability. If available, then return true, otherwise return false. I just realized that it can be done in one line. Just return the result of the method can take area. Next method is for object placement. In it, we do the same with the temporary area like you did in the previous method, so you can just copy that code. Then set the bool place to true and call the building system to take the area. Next, we have to have a method to actually check the placement. It's simple, just check if an object can be placed. If so, Call place method and save the position. Otherwise, destroy this object. After the if statement, call shop manager to open the shop. We implemented this system in the previous episode, which you can watch on my channel. Go back to the editor and open the prefab we created. 
add placeable object script to it and fill in the area size. I set it to 8x8 and by 1. Setting the Z to 1 is absolutely important because the system won't work without it. Open the object drag script. Create a vector 3 for the initial position. Create two float fields for a delta x and y coordinates. Now in the start method save the start position of the mouse. Convert it to world coordinates. Calculate the deltas by subtracting the corresponding coordinate of the current object position from the start position. This is needed to have an offset from the point the mouse is touching an object to the center of it. In the update method we get the mouse position again and convert it to world coordinates. We calculate a new position of an object by subtracting from the mouse position we just got the delta values we have saved. Then we convert this position to cell position on the grid and that back to the world. Calling the same method we already did when we implemented grid snapping, cell to local interpolated. Assign this position to the transform. To place an object we have to release the touch. For this, in the late update check if the mouse button is up. If it is true, notify the placeable object to check placement and remove this script by destroying it. That's it for this script. Go to the editor and find a shop item in the resources folder. Set the prefab field there. Now, we have a few more things to do in other scripts to make this work. In the shop item drag, create a field for a shop item and an initialize method to initialize this field. After this, in the script shop item holder, when you add a component of shop item drag, initialize it. After this, find method on trigger enter 2D. Save the current position of an object and convert it to world coordinates. Remember, this is a UI object, so we have to do this. And then call the building system to initialize it with an object. Pass the prefab and the position we calculated. Go to the editor and test it. Now we can move on to the next part, editing the map after the placement was completed. When an object detects a lawn touch, it will notify the system to clear the area under it and to start moving that object. Since we have the original position of that object saved, in case the new area is not available for placement, the object will be returned to it and placed again. In the placeable object script create two fields, a float time and a bull touching. Create an update method. Here we will handle on touch. In it, check if we're not touching and if an object is placed. If yes, check for mouse button down. In this case, set the time to zero. Else if get mouse button. In this scope, increase the time and if it reaches more than 3 seconds, we do some actions. Set the bull touching to true. Add object drag to this object. Now we have to clear the area under the house since we detected a long touch. You've done it before, so no need to comment on the conversions. Call the building system to clear the area. After the first if, write another one. Check if we're touching and if the mouse button is up. If so, set the touching to false. Go to the check placement method. Cut the code we wrote earlier, write an if which checks if an object is not placed and paste the code there. Paste the same code in else. Modify the scope if an object cannot be placed. Reset the position to origin and call place method. Now the system is ready to test. We have everything we need. We can place an object by dragging it onto the map. Then we can edit the map and move an object around. Now we can set the opacity of this indication tile map to zero, since the player shouldn't see it. And now our system is finally complete. I left you one small thing to finish. Invoke the event to charge the player some currency when we place an object. If it wasn't placed before, of course. Finally, I can say thank you for watching. Like this video and subscribe to my channel to see more content like this. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting me. This helps me a lot to continue making these videos, and it can get you some nice benefits, like project files from my tutorials, like this one. And this is it for this video, see you soon, bye!